How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a second year medical student studying at McMaster University in Canada. Now what we're going to be talking about today is medical school rejection or more specifically how you could come up with a plan to get accepted into medical school relative to your own situation if you've been rejected. So lately I've gotten a ton of messages from students now that it was just the application season. I've gotten messages from students that told me that they used my MCAT plan to study this summer and they got some great scores on the MCAT, 515, 520, even some 525s and a 526 and I think that's awesome. But at the same time, I also got some messages from other students that told me that they just didn't have the time to study for the MCAT that they thought that they would, and they didn't do very well on the test, or they have a little bit of a lower GPA, and now they're considering giving up on medicine altogether. So today, we're actually going to be taking a step back and talking about being rejected from medical school or just not having a competitive application, and what you guys can do about it if you ever find that you're in the same situation that I was in back at the end of my undergrad. Because normally, most students starting in the fourth year of their undergrad, the beginning of their fourth year will apply to medical school that way they could get accepted part way through their fourth year and actually start medical school the following year so directly after their undergrad but when I was in my fourth year starting off in the beginning my application definitely wouldn't have been competitive and I was really wondering whether or not I would ever get in as a matter of fact technically in the fourth year I wasn't even rejected from medical school and that's because I didn't even apply and at the time to me that felt so much worse even in the cycle when I eventually got in though out of the five schools that I was applied to I was outright rejected by three got interviews at two and finally was accepted at the school that I'm at right now. I've been on both sides of the application process and I definitely know how crappy it feels to work really really hard for something that you want to do only to get there at the end and not be competitive enough or not be accepted. So in today's video I'm going to be dividing it up into two parts. First I'm going to be talking about a little bit about my own story but more importantly my five-year plan that I came up with for myself at the end of my undergrad to make sure that I was going to get into medical school. Then at the very end I'm going to be talking about three things that really helped me out and that I was told to keep in mind after not being accepted right away. And if this video is already too long for you guys, you need to go. And there's one thing that I want you to take with you after you leave. It's that only you get to decide what you're willing to do and how long you're willing to spend chasing your goals. Don't let anyone else decide your future for you. And if there's something that you want bad enough, you could find ways to make it happen. So now starting off September, 2017, it was the start of my fourth year. And my GPA at the time was definitely not competitive, okay? And I mean, that's relative. Pre-med is really one of those only places where you'll see people complaining about getting a bunch of B pluses and A minuses. But the fact of the matter is that my GPA was not a 3.9, it wasn't a four. It was probably closer to around a 3.6 at the time. And it definitely wasn't competitive for a lot of the schools that I was interested in. I had also written the MCAT once before and it was the same thing. I got about a 505, which isn't bad, but once again, it wasn't really competitive for my situation. Now, if this ever happens to you and you're in fourth year and these are your grades, you think your life is over. You have all your friends telling you that now's a good time to start thinking about a career change. Maybe you could look into going down to the Caribbean or some of the international programs. You think maybe you'll go on pre-med 101 or another pre-med forum to find some creative solutions, but that just makes this whole situation like 10 times worse. And yeah, that was me. That's exactly how it happened. I was 21 years old and that was my situation and I thought it was over. I thought there was nothing else that I could do. I knew that I needed to go to medical school, but I had no idea how I was going to go about doing it. I didn't want to go down to the Caribbean because $400,000 for four years of education, compound interest. I was already swimming in student loans at the time and all my family's here. So I did want to stay in Canada. That way I could practice here in Canada. And it's really hard if you go down to the Caribbean or one of the international programs. But anyways, I had no idea what to do. And yeah, sometimes you do feel like giving up. I realized though that giving up really wasn't going to help the situation at all. It wasn't going to get me any closer to my goal. I had told myself that I was going to medical school and that's all there was to it. So all I really needed to do was come up with a plan as to how I was going to get in. Now, don't get me wrong. The first thing that I did was take two or three days to feel sorry for myself, but then I knew it was time to get back to work. And that's when I came up with the idea for the five-year plan. Now, basically I was giving myself five years because I was 21 years old at the time. And I had told myself that as long as I could get into medical school, by the time I was 26 years old, that would leave me with enough time to do a four-year um, medical school. And then an additional two to maybe five years of residency, depending what I would want to go into. And I was still totally fine with that. But this is exactly what I meant before when I said that only you get to decide how long you're willing to chase your goals and what you're willing to do to actually achieve the things that you want to. Quick side note though, I do have a few friends who didn't start medical school until their late 20s or even early 30s. So if this does apply to you, definitely don't feel badly about it at all. 
Now, fixing a bad medical school application is a pretty big task, but luckily the best way to handle a big task is to divide it up into a few smaller tasks because then it becomes a lot more manageable. So in my case, and actually for everyone's case, the three most important things of applying to medical school is having a great GPA, a great MCAT score, and then some extracurriculars. And there's also things like the Casper test, but we'll leave that for another video. The most important thing though is setting the proper goals before you actually go out and start studying or start getting ready for extracurriculars. You want to know exactly what these schools are looking for. So the very first thing that I would recommend when you're coming up with your own plan is to look at every single school that you're interested in applying to and seeing exactly what the average student looks like at that school and what the school requires from you before you actually get in. Now for those of you that are Canadian applicants, I did look recently at a video on my channel at every single Canadian school going over what they look for in their applicants so if you guys are in that planning stage be sure to check it out so my five-year plan was to start with the things that was going to impact my application the most and then as time went on i would be applying every single year while also improving my overall application so in the first year of my five-year plan i needed to improve my gpa so that meant finishing the fourth year of my undergrads that was the year that i was currently on with straight a's and i did that and then afterwards in my second year i would make sure to delay my graduation and i actually took another year of undergrad to further raise my GPA and I also got straight A's in that year as well. I also wrote the MCAT for a second time in between my fourth year and my fifth year of undergrad. So this was basically up until year two of my five-year plan. And I was able to do a lot better on the MCAT this time. I changed my entire study schedule around and I was able to get a 517, which is a big deal when it comes to applying to medical schools. A great MCAT score will really help you out. Now, year three of the plan is really where it started to get scary because at this point here, I knew that after my fifth year, I was gonna be in some serious debt. I had just about maxed out my government student loans at this time, I was on OSAP every single year. And I knew that I needed some sort of money if I was gonna keep going with a master's degree and other things later. So I decided that I was gonna take the year after my fifth year off and work full time. And what I was gonna do actually was one of my buddies is actually a crane uh, operator. He works at a construction site downtown and he said that they needed laborers at his job. So actually, if I didn't get accepted into medical school the year that I got accepted, I would have been working as a laborer downtown, making $25 an hour, and the plan was to do 40 or 50 hour weeks for that entire year, make a substantial amount of money working construction, and then be able to afford to keep going on with school for uh, another two years until I had eventually gotten into medical school. And then finally, in years four and years five, I had planned to go back to Ryerson or some university and do a master's degree. Master's degrees for the schools that I was looking into really weren't that big of a boost to your overall application, but I found that my research section of my extracurriculars was probably the weakest in my undergrad, and I thought that a master's degree would really go a long way towards that. Thankfully though, I never actually made it that far into my five-year plan. I was accepted to medical school at the end of the second year of my five-year plan. So it's just after I finished my fifth year of undergrad. And I've been making these videos on YouTube ever since, trying to help out other people that are also looking to get into medical school. And I get it, sometimes it's really easy to feel like the situation that you're in now is just hopeless. And that no matter what you do, there's nothing that's gonna change it. But I promise you, if I didn't sit down, come up with a plan, a schedule, something back when I wasn't accepted into medical school at the end of my undergrad, then I definitely wouldn't be here today as a medical student talking with you guys. Now, as for the three most important things that really helped me out after I wasn't accepted, these are three facts that often get thrown around. The first of which being is that many medical students don't get accepted into medical school on their first try. I think the stat that actually gets thrown around in Canada is that it's around two to three applications on average before you're actually accepted and that doesn't mean that you're a bad doctor because it took two or three times to get in because you actually got in in the end and most of the learning happens in medical school and residency anyways the second thing is that this is exactly the same when it comes to the MCAT if you have to write the MCAT twice three times, four times. I think the limit for the MCAT right now is about six times. And whether you get it right the first time or the sixth time, this is not gonna influence your actual abilities as a doctor. And the last thing is that no matter how great you are today, there is always room for improvement. And if there's one thing that I am thankful to the medical school application process for teaching me, it's exactly that because it's so important to keep that in mind when you actually get into medical school. Shifting your mindset to one of a lifelong learner and continuing to find ways to get back up after you've been knocked down is still just as important to me today as it's ever been. And I really don't see that changing anytime soon. But other than that, guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. I wish you guys all the best of luck if you've already applied or if you're getting ready to apply or if you're just getting ready to start planning out your five-year journey now. We'll see you all in the next one. Everyone take care.